the bloody violence on the border of Israel overnight. More than 52 people shot dead. Now, it was a striking contrast yesterday. In Jerusalem, Ivanka Trump, daughter of the US president, opened the new US embassy in Jerusalem, moved there from Tel Aviv. On behalf of the 45th president of the United States on America, we welcome you officially and for the first time to the embassy of the United States here in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Meanwhile, on Israel's border with Gaza, which is controlled by the Hamas terrorist group, thousands of Palestinians protested against Israel's existence, against its founding 70 years ago, and against the US moving its embassy to Jerusalem, which Palestinians also claim as their capital. Israeli soldiers shot dozens of the protesters near the border fence, including teenagers. And the optics, superficially at least, seem compelling. Here's heavily armed Israelis slaughtering Palestinian civilians. And that's exactly the picture the Palestinian leadership wanted. Palestinian politicians like Mustafa Baghouti are exploiting this and with some success. I've met so many ministers, so many prime ministers in the world who always told us, why don't you march peacefully? This is exactly what we are doing. Excuse me, peaceful protests? Not so. There were the stone throws, for instance, and groups of potentially armed men hiding behind smoke screens of burning tires, just waiting for the fence to fall, or trying to storm it while throwing Molotov cocktails. And if those thousands of protesters had broken through into Israel, what then? How many Jews would they kill? Well, or Jews is no longer popular in many elite circles, and the foreign ministers of France and even Britain implied that Israel had been trigger-happy. Obviously, we're extremely saddened by the loss of life that's taken place, and uh, we understand that there the are some people who've been uh, provoking that, uh, that violence, but on the other hand, uh, there's got to be a restraint in, in the use of, of life found. But Donald Trump's White House spokesman, at least, blames Hamas, which controls Gaza, and deliberately incited these protests. Does the U.S. not agree with the French that Israeli authorities should exercise discretion and dis uh, restraint? We believe that Hamas is responsible for what's going on. So there's no responsibility beyond that on the Israeli authorities. Kill at will. What, what I'm saying is that we believe that Hamas, as an organization, is engaged in cynical action that's leading to these deaths. Her own prime minister also sheeted the blame straight to Hamas. Any loss of life is uh, like this is, or any loss of life is tragic in these circumstances, but Hamas's conduct is confrontational. They're seeking to provoke so the, the Israeli this defense is forces. So the hands of Hamas? Or well, if they're pushing people to the border uh, in an in a, in a, in a area, in a, you know, in, in that context, in that conflict zone, uh, you're basically pushing people into circumstances where they are very likely to be shot at uh, as Israel seeks to defend itself. For a fuller understanding of this confrontation, you do need some background. Maybe then you can understand why Israel cannot afford not to defend that fence along its border, even with deadly force. And perhaps it also explains why many Muslim countries are relatively muted in their criticism of what it's done. For one, Hamas is an Islamist terrorist group. Its charter still calls for Israel to be wiped from the map and Jews to be killed. Hamas soldiers have in the past fired many rockets at Israel and dug tunnels under the fence to attack Israeli towns, take hostages. Gaza preachers, even on the Friday before this organized protest, in sermons broadcast on television, called for the destruction of Israel and death for the wicked Jews. <laughs> The 
In fact, even children in Gaza are taught by Hamas television to hate Jews and kill them. And the Israeli military says Hamas on a Facebook page urged followers to bring a knife or a gun to yesterday's protests and to try to kidnap an Israeli soldier if the fence did come down. So, to the critics and the dreamers who say, why do the Israelis shoot people who simply want a fence torn down? Or who say, why not just let more of these Palestinians in Gaza just simply live in Israel? What you're really saying is, let's have more Jews killed. But the Jews of Israel have decided that they will not be anyone's favourite victim anymore.